Hello, and thank you for joining us for our talk today. We're going to present a phenomenon in the Chudrebek dialect of Armenian and argue that it favors a distributed model of phonological representation in which length and weight, represented by X slots and moras respectively, are encoded on separate autosegmental tiers. This finding complements work by Curtis, Hume, Lahiri, and others, arguing that both X slots and moras are necessary, and neither is sufficient on its own. You may have seen or heard about the region of Antakya in south-central Turkey, when calls went out in the west to send aid to the Turks and Kurds in the region, who were hit by a series of earthquakes back in February of 2023. You probably didn't hear about the Armenian communities in the area. During the Crusader period, almost a thousand years ago, this region was directly adjacent to the Armenian kingdom of Cilicia, and there were still a large number of Armenian villages and urban communities here until 1915, when the Ottoman Turks began decimating the population. Six Armenian villages around the foot of the mountain of Moses on the present-day border between Turkey and Syria, which is called Musaler in Armenian and Musada, or more recently Samanda in Turkish, resisted the genocide, ascending the mountain and holding out against the Ottoman army for more than 50 days until they were rescued by French warships. The story of this resistance is told in Franz Werfel's book, The Forty Days of Musadach, which was published in Germany in 1933 and had a significant impact on my old mentor, Morris Halley, and other members of the German-speaking Jewish communities in Europe at the time. It was translated into Armenian at the same year by Dikran Antriasian, the local priest who was one of the leaders of the resistance, and later wrote a detailed study of his own dialect of the village of Yodnoluk. The Armenians of Musaler actually managed to return to their villages after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire in 1918, but with the exception of the residents of Vakuf, moved en masse to Anjar in Lebanon in 1939. Each village staked out a separate part of Anjar, which enabled the old village dialects to remain distinct up to the present day. The family of our primary source for today's talk, Hago Panosian, came from Khudrebek, so we will be focusing on their sub-dialect today. Hagop was born in 1945 in Damascus, but his family moved to Anjar when he was a month old. He grew up and attended school in Anjar before moving to the United States to study engineering. Four Armenian varieties originally spoken in the Musale region on the Turkish-Syrian border possess an intricate series of vowel alternations that we call lengthening by enclitization, or LBE. In the subdialects of the villages marked in blue, most clitics trigger lengthening and diphthongization of a preceding vowel. Here's a quick example from the dialects of Khudrebek and Bityas. Chujao kidain nesteuts. In Bityas dialect, it will be Chujoche kidain nesteuze. The second subdialect, Bityas, resembles most varieties of Armenian in having overt exponents of definiteness, which is pronounced as N after vowels and schwa, or u, uh, after consonants. And of the copular and auxiliary verb is, pronounced e in bityas and most other forms of Armenian, and pronounced e in chudrbek. In cliticization contexts, though, chudrbek reduces both the definite article u uh, and the auxiliary e to zero. This process of enclitization leading to lengthening of the rightmost root vowel is what we call LBE. Note that in the four blue subdialects, LBE triggers lengthening whether or not the vowel of the clitic deletes. Chudrbek has 12 underlying vowel phonemes, eight monophthongs, and four diphthongs. LBE produces many additional long allophones. Here are some definiteness alternations to give you an idea of the scope of the phenomenon. Odds, odds, goat, zen, zain, horse, 
Tet, Tait, Mulberry, Vunk, Vink, Monastery, Ir, Eir, Village, Uts, Heuts, Bread, Astuds, Astodes, God, Rang, Rang, Fingernail. Sürd, Sürd, Art. Schon, Schaun, Dog. Koir, Kair, Sister. Deun, Down, House. The total range of LBE alternations produces the following pattern. The system appears alarmingly messy at first glance, but the basic picture is fairly straightforward. High and low vowels generally become mid diphthongs, and mid vowels become low diphthongs. LBE is robustly productive, applying to native and borrowed words with virtually no exceptions suggesting that we are dealing with a synchronically active system. We have already seen many native examples, and here I include representative loan examples, like Arabic maktub, letter, becoming maktub, while the letter lengthens to makteub. LBE applies in a consistent and phonologically predictable manner to every lexical and functional category to which clitics can attach, suggesting that the process is phonological rather than stored in memory as allomorph pairs. Hutterbeck has surface length contrasts for both vowels and consonants, but underlying length contrasts only for consonants. All consonant sequences, including geminates, are transparent to LBE. Hutterbeck is therefore a type 1 language in Topensi and Zimmermann's typology. No code of consonants, including geminates, are moraic. There are three types of enclitic with respect to LBE. Class 1 clitics contain at least one underlying vowel and always trigger LBE. Class II clitics consist of only a consonant underlyingly and only trigger LBE when added to a consonant final host. Class III clitics never trigger LBE and won't be considered here. We believe that these adjoin at a higher level in the prosodic structure. Based on the facts just reviewed, I propose the following analysis of LBE. First of all, Prosodic structure is processed cyclically. Syllabification and epenthesis are also carried out cyclically, as elaborated by Vox 1998 and Dolatian 2021. Following Vox 1998, we assume that cyclic syllabification is subject to final consonant extraprosodicity, which leaves a domain final consonant unsyllabified at the end of its cycle. Secondly, if at the end of cyclic syllabification a stray consonant remains, Hutterbeck and Armenian generally show the same patterns as are documented for Barcelona Catalan by Bonnet and Lorette 2005. A. The stray consonant attaches as coda to a preceding vowel final syllable if available. No new prosodic word constituent is constructed. B. The stray consonant is not allowed to join to a pre-existing coda, even if the resulting segmental string is illicit coda in the language. Several explanations for this effect have been proposed, which are reviewed by Dolatian 2022. Bonnet and Yoret 2005, for example, propose a constraint requiring that the right edge of a lexical word align with the right edge of a subsyllabic constituent, margin, or nucleus. 3. If for any reason the stray consonant is not able to attach to the preceding syllable, epenthesis applies and a new prosodic word is constructed. 
A new prosodic word constituent is also built for any clitic containing one or more full vowels. Fourth, after the syllabic and prosodic structure of a maximal prosodic word have been computed, a domain final strengthening process applies. We call this junctural strengthening, borrowing Harrison's 1984 term for a similar process of pre enclitic lengthening in Mokalese. Similar processes are reported in Muini, Ponopean, Serbo Croatian, and many other languages. 5. We analyze junctural strengthening as a process inserting a floating mora at a prosodic word boundary between a host and a clitic. 6. The inserted mora can attach to the nearest available host segment. We assume a distributed representational structure that includes both timing and mora tiers. Because Hudrbeck is a type 1 language, as mentioned earlier, no consonants are linked to the mora tier. The floating mora will therefore ignore all intervening consonants and attach to the rightmost vowel in the host, subject to the line crossing constraint and the schwa attachment constraint. Here is a sample derivation. The expression a neck is built from vez, neck, plus the enclitic indefinite article m. The host vez is parsed as a prosodic word, to which the enclitic m attaches as part of a higher prosodic word constituent. Junctural strengthening then inserts a floating mora at the prosodic boundary, as in 2. This mora then attaches to the closest available host to the left, producing vez m with a long a, as in 3. In the post-cyclic component, the long a is then spelled out as a, giving the surface form vaisma, as shown in 4. At this point, you might be wondering why we propose a mora insertion rule, rather than asserting that class 1 and class 2 clitics include a floating mora in their lexical entries. Our reason is, that if class two clitics had a floating mora in their lexical entries, it would be difficult to explain why they only trigger LBE when attached to a consonant final host. In our analysis, wherein mora insertion only applies when a prosodic word boundary is present between the host and the clitic, we can attribute the lack of LBE between a vowel final host and a class two clitic to the fact that in this configuration, the clitic can syllabify as a coda for the final host syllable without requiring construction of a new prosodic word structure. This analysis follows what Bonnet and Lloret 2005 proposed for Barcelona Catalan and Dolatian 2022 for Standard Western Armenian. Pulling back to our analysis as a whole, the key for the purposes of today's workshop is that floating moras can move through any number of seas, including geminates. We have shown that this is straightforwardly obtainable in a distributed model with autonomous timing and weight tiers. We will now argue that the same facts are problematic for models which eschew either x slots or moras. According to Hayes 1989, Moraic theory explicitly predicts that long-distance movement of moras should only be possible to a preceding open syllable by dint of a line-crossing constraint. LBE problematizes this prediction, as floating moras can spread through any number of intervening consonants, including geminates. Let's consider type 1 languages like Hudrbeck, where no coda consonants are moraic. Non-moraic consonants should block lengthening if linked directly to the syllable, a la McCarthy and Prince 1986, Tronell 1991, and Driscoll 2019, which is the mirror image of 66 in Hayes 1989. If they link to the vowel's mora, flopping is required. Let's consider a neck again. There are two main ways of representing non-moraic codas in moraic theory. Linked to the nuclear mora, as in Hayes 1989 in A, or linked directly to the syllable, as in McCarthy and Prince 1986 in B. In model A, 
association of the floating mora to the vowel through the consonant should be blocked. Hayes claims that the same blocking should hold in the McCarthy and Prince type of representation in B, but it is not clear to me why this should be the case, since the association line between the Z and the syllable node is arguably not on the same plane as the association line between the floating mora and the vowel. Model B does appear to predict blocking by host final geminate consonants, though, given that they contrast with final singleton consonants in Hudderbeck and hence should be Moraic. A related problem for both models A and B, as noted by Hayes 1989, is that attachment of the floating mora to a consonant final host might be expected to geminate that consonant rather than skipping to the vowel. Another problem related to our line crossing point is that mora theory explicitly excludes rightward long distance movement of moras, but such cases are attested as documented by Guest 2011. The problem appears to lie not in whether consonants are moraic or not, or where in the syllable they attach, but rather in Mora theory's conflation of weight and length. What about X-slot theory without Moras? Here we encounter the flopping problem pointed out by Hayes 1989. In more complex forms that undergo LBE, cascades of delinking of X-slots, followed by relinking of those slots to preceding segments, are required. This may be formally computable, but we find it unsatisfying compared to our distributed alternative, particularly considering the range of independent evidence for the existence of both moras and x-slots. In conclusion, we have seen that in Hudrebeck lengthening by enclitization, enclitics productively lengthen the final full vowel of the host under well-defined phonological conditions ignoring any intervening consonants, including geminates. This type of long-distance lengthening is explicitly ruled out by Hayes' 1989 version of Mora theory. McCarthy and Prince's 1986 version fares better, but may still have problems with geminates. X-Law theory has the familiar flopping issue. We account for the facts by proposing that, first of all, Domain final strengthening may be implemented as mora insertion, parallel to the more familiar tone melody insertion, consonant fortition, and so on. Second, weight and length are encoded on separate autonomous tiers, as has been proposed on independent grounds by many others. This neatly allows for a long-distance moraic movement subject to relativized locality in a serial phonological architecture. Thank you.